<laughs> yeah. You know? Well, he starts off by telling how telling her how amazing it is, and she's never had it. And then he's like, "Yeah, I just had some yesterday." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he's such yeah. a dick. Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined by Barrett Cher from CinemaSins, and music video sins and things. Yo! And uh, today, uh, stepping in as a special guest, we have Aaron Dicer. Hi, Dilly Ho, Centerinos. That's right, that's right. And uh, we are going to be doing a mini pod -pod. of The Hunt. Uh, A hunty pod. A hunty pod, yes, (laughs) yes. Um, uh, a movie that was supposed to come out in September, I believe, of last year. Sounds right. And uh, I guess the main reason it got pushed back was because of the Parkland shooting? Some sort of gun issue. Yes. Uh, Remember, though, when this movie was about to come out, all I ever heard, I didn't even hear about that. I heard, before it came out, I heard that people were upset that it was you know liberals chasing after deplorables and blah 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 mm-hmm. and and the poli- the politics are too uh supercharged and donald trump hates this movie and <laughs> that's why it's gonna not be it's not gonna be shown ever i thought they had completely canceled i thought so too yeah uh and then march rolls around and then suddenly they're like yeah we're gonna come out with us <laughs> and i knew that was probably the way it was gonna go down i mean the movie looked i mean it looked good and it looked like it looked fun yeah uh, had you seen a trailer back in those days? Yes, I I think I saw a bit of a trailer, but I don't I didn't remember anything about this movie, aside from the fact that Betty Gilpin was in it from Glow, and that it was these quote liberals hunting the quote deplorables or the 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 right wingers, mm-hmm. uh, the alt right type of thing. Yeah, very interesting. You have a combination of the most dangerous game with the Last Supper. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> uh very much so yeah um the the and the last supper didn't make nearly the waves this did but the last supper was did you ever see the last supper no um it's got a huge cast in it like <laughs> there's cameron, a lot of people like, yeah there's a lot of people <laughs> cameron diaz annabeth gish uh, uh and then a lot of just like uh people playing republicans who are guest guests like bill paxton uh is in there uh oh, the hellboy ron perlman uh, ron perlman um and uh there's uh yeah you have courtney b, b- vance is mm-hmm. in it there's uh there's a ton of people in it uh and uh the the uh people around the 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 people who there's a it's a bunch of liberals who live together in this one house and they start saying you know liberals we never do anything we don't like take any action and everything. The Republicans, they get in the office and they're instantly like doing stuff. And mm. uh, we are always like having what it's like. And so then it was first off, it's sort of a joke. Well, let's look at invite somebody over and try to, uh, actually they, at first they're just like, let's invite somebody over and see if we can change their mind. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then they accidentally kill the person at the, at the dinner and then it becomes a whole thing where they're where they're like they kind of get a thirst for it mm-hmm. and they start bringing people over and if they can't change their mind they poison their drink mm-hmm. so that's sort of what last supper's about yes it is. Is it. the hunt is got a little bit of a different premise mm-hmm. more of the most dangerous game thing like i said uh so where do we want to start on this jeez i mean this is a hard movie to talk without any spoilers whatsoever mm-hmm. uh i will say you know, even though we're still on the non-spoiler talk, yeah, go into this movie if you haven't seen it yet, knowing as little as possible, uh, because you, I think you'll be rewarded. Uh, I didn't know who the cast was uh, outside of Betty Gilpin, uh, and the cast is is pitch perfect all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, what wherever you stand on the political spectrum, this movie can probably speak to you <laughs> and make yeah, fun totally. of you and make fun of you. Yes. Yeah. And make fun of the other side. Yep. And you can watch this as just a high value entertainment and have a, a, a good time on the, the whole thing. It's a super violent, super satirical, uh, very well shot, very well written uh, uh, movie that has a lot of different angles to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you guys see Battle Royale? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of just, you know, kind of that uh, over the top you know gore same concept you know obviously but 
Um, I think it's one of the I I was not expecting to like this. I I figured I would go in and anytime a movie is overly violent or whatever, it just kind of grosses me out. I'm mm. not into gore; it's not my thing. Um, but when when you can nail the tone, especially of comic satire, mm-hmm. it is there's something that happens where there's a giddiness to it that it just it just works. It just works. You're just having fun, and you know, um, it's I the almost, same thing with John Wick, right? Uh, like when John Wick is at its peak, sure, it's a sure. Looney Tunes thing, even though it's super gory. Absolutely, hundred percent agree. Um, so yeah, I uh, I was very surprised and, and pleased that I was having so much fun. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, before we get into spoilers, uh, what do you, what are you guys going to give this grade? <laughs> Maybe it's a recency effect, but and I'll temper my excitement and give it an A minus. I'm tempted to give it an A just mm-hmm. because I had so much fun with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but probably there's probably some things that, that, uh, could be tweaked to be better. So I'll say A minus, but mm-hmm. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wrote it down, uh, this morning when I was filling out my spreadsheet as an A minus. Yeah. That's a, that's uh, the so. right grade. I think A minus. It's not quite the excellence of an a yeah but that's nitpicky uh we really enjoyed this so yeah and we're a minus across the board although if i mean no more movies come out this year it'll probably be nominated for an oscar yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> you know what uh, before we get into spoilers betty gilpin's performance here is fantastic it's special so right good. it's uh, really special i mean i i don't know if it's oscar worthy uh but i i really think that she you know, the only thing I'd seen her in actually is Glow before this, mm-hmm. and she's terrific in Glow. She's mm-hmm. really, really good in Glow. Uh, but she taps into a very different side uh, of her performing uh, in, in this thing. And There's I a love moment. It. Oh my goodness! There's a moment where she's talking about her job, her day to day job. Mm-hmm. She's like, "I don't often get an opportunity to," and she just she has this. Do you know the scene I'm talking about? The line I'm talking about? I don't want to give it away. Maybe even spoilers. I'll give it away. Mm. But she does something just with her her face her countenance mm-hmm. to express the rest of that line and yeah, it's yeah. so perfect oh i know exactly what you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm actually yeah. I, gotta, I gotta get a refresher on that okay line. yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll get, get you in spoilers we'll get on but... the uh, spoilers uh and uh, really start talking about this movie now no spoilers Kevin Spacey is Kaiser Sose. Luke's what? father is actually Darth Vader. She's what? the sister and the daughter. She's they just no, 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 no. I'm reading the books. All right. No spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's the line? Oh, yeah. So she, the guy asks her, is it the, the consultant? Is yeah, she talking yeah. to the consultant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the consultant's like, you know, uh, you know how are you doing this or something? I forget what he asked, but she's like, I'm a such and such in my day-to-day life. And yet inside, I'm kind of like, and she just kind of yeah. she makes a face, oh, and, yeah. and then she's like, and here I can be. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just kind of there's little subtle things when uh, we'll get into the actual uh, process, but when she's about to kick the guy out of the car, yeah, she utters this like almost res- resigned sigh, but yes. it's also like. And she gets in position yeah, yeah. and kicks his ass out the door. slowly gets in position. It's just like, yep, I'm doing this thing. You don't yeah. even know. You're like, even if you kind of know that she's about to do something to that dude, you're like, what is she doing? <laughs> There's a resignation to everything she does. Yeah. Like, I guess this is the life I'm living right mm. now. You know, it's just kind of like, it's, it's so a survivor fun. spirit. She right, knows that right. she's in the shit. And she, God damn. I mean, this is basically a John Wick style. Uh, atomic blonde yeah like a superhero she's a superhero yeah, yeah for yeah. sure yeah so the story of this is that uh these people are taken to a place they don't know where it is uh they know that they were knocked out wherever they were and they know that they woke up in this place that they are being told is arkansas anyway they wake up and they go out into this field and there's these boxes full of guns and all that we have emma robert roberts in here we have uh that dude hartley just justin hartley is that his name the guy from this is us this is us guy yeah Yeah. he's he's in there um and uh a a few others i don't quite recognize but uh they're all they're they all come in there and they find out they've got they got guns and everything so they start taking the guns but then suddenly out of nowhere they're getting shot at <laughs> and and then so everybody has to scatter and they have to you those know. first few deaths are so perfectly played they are, mm-hmm. they are 
Like, you, we've seen so many movies. We've seen this, the surprise death done so many times. And this movie got me at least three times in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it got me. It mm-hmm. got me. Movies don't get me like that often. But this movie got me. And I think it's just because we are trained. They're using our own uh, cinema training against us, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. the movie has this way of using, okay, so who's going to be Betty Gilpin's number? We know Betty Gilpin is the hero. We, mm-hmm. we know that, you know, from the beginning, whatever, when we see her making a magnet uh, with a leaf and a, a needle. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what was it? Anthony Hopkins was in a movie where they did? What oh, was the, the Edge. The Edge, the edge. Yeah. yes. Uh, anyways, we, we know that, you know, she's the hero. But so we're wondering, okay, who's her number two? Who else are we going to have along this journey as the team that's going to come with her or whatever? It's like, oh, this girl, we were introduced to her here. You know, we've been given the introduction to her. So she's going to be the mm-hmm. one. Boom, her face gets blown <laughs> off. <laughs> right as the, the guy from This Is Us is, you know, trying to help her. Like, oh, it was him. Yeah. It was the guy from this is us and then he saves somebody and then steps on a mine and gets blown to pieces he and- saves somebody who has fallen into a a, a pit of spikes <laughs> she's got a, two spikes running right through her and he pulls her out and then he's like, all right, we got to go. And they wa- start walking towards the edge and hit them. Then the mine happens. And then they get blown to bit. <laughs> and then somebody else comes along to the pit of spikes. And now it's that same woman who was <laughs> back, in it, back in the pit with a spike through, through her, <laughs> through her body. Only this time she's in half. <laughs> um, and that's like Baron Holtz, who now you think. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has got to be. He's the next. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. Like Baron Holtz, he's definitely the next yeah. guy that we're, and he, he finds his way to a gas station and it's run by these two, these two older people who, uh, we're not quite sure they're on in on it yet or whatever, but he goes in and, uh, he wants to make a phone call. One of the weirdest things about this movie though, is when he makes that nine one one phone call uh-huh. and he's like, what the, the, they're asking for the address. He doesn't just ask the people in, in the, the the store right what the get what the address is yeah he just says just trace the call <laughs> yeah and uh and they're like oh trace the call that's a good that's a good idea or whatever <laughs> uh of course the whoever's on 911 is is on in on it and everything um mm-hmm. uh but uh yeah uh after uh, so he 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 gets uh what is it he the is there more is there more people that show there's other people with him he, there's three of them i think yeah at that All moment and one of them's escaped. poisoned with some donuts yeah, and, one yeah. of them needs a poison donut <laughs> yeah and uh and then uh and then uh he gets uh i guess he, he gets blown away yeah they shoot him with shotgun i think right and uh and so like these two these two people running the store are like these ultra liberal people like just like <laughs> they get into arguments about like what they what's proper to say and- yeah they get in a uh whatever the what's the gun is it the second amendment is that the right to bear i can't yeah. remember i don't know my yeah. amend- mm. amendments very well nor can i say amendment very well apparently <laughs> uh so th- they have this this is one of the gifts of this movie is the dialogue about politics Mm -hmm. because it's just over the top enough that you realize how ridiculous we sound sometimes when we're discussing these things Mm -hmm. and it's both both ways it's ridiculous and so it's yeah i i really appreciated that because that's where they turn in that gas station is the second amendment conversation you know where they're like oh but if they have guns you know then you know they have they're just doing what they have the right to do right yeah yeah and ike barinhall's like what the fuck are you talking about (laughs) uh and then as they uh they they, i think they poison them too they they throw in some sort of gas yeah. and they put yeah, the gas yeah there's a gas yeah yeah i don't know if they blow away ike baron Holtz, but they definitely like throw in some gas and they get they get uh you know gassed or whatever and they put them out in the uh put them in another room that's when betty Culpin shows up and uh the price of cigarettes in arkansas that's where i think i knew i was going to be dude, in love with this movie this part uh, they i don't know if it's because actors are never allowed to do stuff like this but uh this this uh, line reading is the part yeah this is the part that got me into the movie yeah she asked for cigarettes and it's like 10 bucks or something or maybe less i don't remember she puts a 10 dollar bill down with like uh, some change and um and so like uh she uh she ends up uh, turning the tables on the woman the amy madigan who plays uh who's uh, known from i think field of dreams uh, mm. was uh, the um, the mom in field of dreams uh turns the tables on her like punches her or something like that goes over gets her gun and goes 
All right, the price of cigarettes in Arkansas, six dollars. You done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, it, and her face is just yeah, filled. Yeah, she's got rage. Just <laughs> <laughs> and um and yeah, and then so she goes out, and then they start sending drones to go find them. Ethan Suplee comes in, like blows away the drone, and then she's like, "You shouldn't have done that." And, uh, he's like, why? He's like, because now they know where the drone is and where that, it, that it got shot down and they're going to come over here and find us and everything. And you start realizing that she is super smart. Yeah. And a lot of the things that they're saying about her don't quite add up. She finds the tripwire on the vehicle before opening the door. Like she yeah. is very aware. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah it's uh, and and then somebody comes to save them that there's a whole train sequence where one of the guys who's who's in on it like mm-hmm. it embeds himself with a bunch it's, of immigrants it's so funny because that's still ethan right in that uh Supli in that moment yeah. and he's like you did hear him say that right like when he all of a sudden starts talking <laughs> regular, yeah because he he's a big podcaster who's like who's uh claiming that all the tragedies of the world have right. crisis actors crisis actors yeah and, uh, babies can be crisis actors <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh and uh and so like the, the the some the military shows up and and the, the, now they 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 say they're they're Americans so they get to a camp and then the vice president's like nephew or the president's nephew shows up and they're like oh we're saved or whatever and as they get in that they're in the car talking to the vice the, the president's nephew that's where she starts and Pet, Barry, Betty Gilpin's like oh yeah this guy's totally not on the level <laughs> and there's that <laughs> and then that kick it's so great. You don't really know what's going on with this woman, other than that she's a badass, mm-hmm. up until really three quarters of the way, until the, 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 the final act. The climax, right? yeah. Uh, so you're not necessarily aware what she's capable of, uh, but she goes in, man, goes into that bunker where Glenn Howerton plays a yeah. fantastic asshole. All the liberals are fucking assholes in this yes. movie. Yes. All of the alt-right people are pretty much fucking assholes. There are some, like the the two stars that get blown away at the beginning, that we don't even know if they're right. complete assholes. Right. But you know, we're kind of giving it. Well, we see their uh, we see their dossiers yeah, at one yeah, point, yeah. so we get an idea. Like one of them had that um, the Nazi march photo. Oh, that's yeah, the fam- yeah. You know, he's in the famous Nazi, and one of them had like a big game. You know, he's out hunting. Yeah, oh, right, which is right. uh, the the uh, the guy who the Jimmy John's guy. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. play on that. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of get an idea of why they're there. Yeah. Um. Uh, Emma Roberts. I don't remember seeing what her picture was, but she does say at one point that when everybody's distributing guns, she's like, "That's not me." That's so. I'm also wondering if maybe she was. Like a possibly a miscast uh, in this, uh, this not miscast in the movie, but miscast in the uh, most dangerous game. Though. Yeah, it's been known to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we haven't even talked about the opening kill where she sticks her heel through the guy's eyeball and pulls out his eyeball with her yep. the heel of her shoe. This is a this is where the ads, by the way, screwed up. They show Hillary Swank, and I'm pretty sure that they the ads show Hillary Swank because the movie makes a big deal about not showing her until the last twenty minutes. That's exactly what I i'm getting at the 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 uh the movie makes a big deal about not showing who it is the entire time and i'm like this is annoying because i've seen the commercials oh and i've seen hillary swank in the commercials and they even they've gotten all the way to the point where she's being interviewed in that and it's like it's that flashback or whatever uh and uh yeah i'm sitting there just going it's hillary swank so what what are well, they doing? And i didn't understand that part of it either because i was waiting for some big reveal and i guess it's just that it's hillary swank and mm-hmm. that's the big reveal but i was like is it going to be betty gilpin again like is it like a twin sister yeah. or something mm-hmm. like so maybe that's a another way the movie's using our conditioning against us i don't know but yeah. i was just like oh it's, it's like, this is a very talented actress <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was like oh it's hillary swank <laughs> cool good yeah. for her yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, it go, it goes like this until they finally get back to where the liberals are and they're like, you know, that's their little, they're to their hideout basically. And they've sort of, they're sort of turned the tables on them and everything. Uh, they have this, uh, I don't know if the whole animal farm thing, if, if they were really trying to go big with that animal farm reference mm. that they were throwing in I there. I mean, it's there, but it's, they don't really play with it a lot. Not much. It's uh, there for the end. It's there for the final dialogue, I think. Yeah, they, they, it, it, she makes a good point about the snowball character in the book and everything, but they don't, they don't really make, uh, yeah, they don't make, if they're trying to make an animal farm sort of 
uh, parallel. I don't think the movie does a very good job of I wonder that. if there is something there. I mean, there's definitely a rabbit theme there, right? Because she's also got the tortoise and the hare story, which yeah. is so great. Yes, that is, is another Betty Gilpin master piece mm-hmm. in this movie is her telling that tortoise and the hare story mm-hmm. in only the way that that character would tell yeah. that story or that that character's mom told them that story or whatever <laughs> yeah. your mom told you that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh but yeah they get they they sort of come back and and uh and off all of those people and then there that leaves the one that leaves hillary swank and uh betty gilpin's the only one left too i can't remember what happens to the other dude does he does he get well she shoots him because gary right right, yeah Yeah, because he was a double agent i don't know what is it don is don yeah Yeah, don Don. and she even asked she said was don you know you or not but she's like you can tell she's not sure because she's like just drop the if you drop the gun i'll know you know and he doesn't drop the gun so she kills him but Mm -hmm. does the movie ever make clear if he was with he's not on the wall uh of right the, the yeah dinosaur. i didn't yeah. see him there either so yeah yeah but i don't know was he was he at the meeting that they show in no. the flashback mm-hmm. no he wasn't at the meeting either so that's okay yeah yeah I don't so know. he's really like we we have no idea right. it's a little ambiguous but mm-hmm. yeah and maybe it's supposed to be yeah leading up to this big fight with betty gilpin and hillary swank uh the the they had a consultant in there who said you know you're not going to be able to do anything to her because she's been training for the last eight months which sounds pretty laughable considering what we have seen betty gilpin do yes, in right this, but of in course this. the consultant doesn't know all that necessarily no 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 i'm not saying the consultant's wrong for saying that i'm just saying that the movie's wrong for later making it into a big fight yeah. at the end where betty gilpin should be just go- wailing on her <laughs> at this point but they make it into this big huge like it's an even fight for a while it's such a great fight it too. is it i is. mean there's there's comic elements there's a great use of space you know where everything is where they're fighting. I mentioned that they've got like some upgrade style, like fr- uh, uh, framing for the mm-hmm. camera, uh, where the camera follows the, 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 the fall of the, the person. And, uh, yeah, they are evenly matched in this, in this context. And it's just so perfectly executed. It's mm-hmm. like a ballet. The yeah. battle for the grilled cheese. That's the, yeah. that's what I would call that. Oh, it's, yeah. It's funny too, man. I'm glad they addressed this in the movie because there's always these scenes. I actually hate, I mean, don't hate them. I, I just think they're stupid when the the main villain tells these long stories to get to their point or whatever. And she says, like, you know, most people use this kind of cheese for a grilled cheese, <laughs> but I use this. It's way better and so on. And uh, and so later on, like when when Betty Gilpin, they're like, taking a break or whatever. Betty Gilpin's like, I didn't want to, like, you know. Slow, you know, uh, slow down your your big grilled cheese story or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's does a nice little turn on this whole thing. Not only did she fuck up the that she got the wrong person, but also that this thing didn't exist until it existed on social yeah, media. Yeah, I love this too. I did. Too. I think it's I think it's the main point of the movie. I think if the satire is saying one thing overall, I think it's that we're creating our own mess by continuing to see each other as you know mortal enemies instead of you know having conversations with each other or whatever now that's that's me adding something underneath the satire but i think that is kind of what that last you know yeah. point that it's making yeah. i so. think you're absolutely right the 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 idea that you know that these people came up with this outlandish story about you know uh you know uh, sh- this woman invites people they call it manor gate uh, this woman invites uh, uh people who voted for Trump over to her house and they kill them. It's so true. It's absolutely the truth. And they believe that and they tell everybody else and all these other people get infected by that lie. But then you do as the liberals in this situation you do the absolutely wrong thing you make which it is, real which is make it real yeah. and that's what Betty <laughs> she's like well you are doing yeah. this <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you get the sense that she gets it yeah she gets that she gets what she's saying but that you did it the you know you are doing this now you made so, us do it yeah yeah yeah, yeah um but that that was what i kept thinking the whole time they must have gotten the wrong person this whole time because this person is just too smart to write a stupid comment on a on a video or or whatever it was that they got her for Mm -hmm. uh uh, i did think it was also funny that they decided to limit it to 12 because of some stupid ass reason and they wanted to have more people of color because yes (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and then like as so, soon as that guy comes up, they're like, oh, they're like flashing through all these like white people, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And this black guy shows up, and they're like, oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, and then the the com- I, this movie is funny it oh, really yeah. is funny i that just reminded me of the the couple in the gas station having the conversation about race where she, she's like you can't say black it's african American. like we can say black again you know <laughs> yeah it was, it was like, on npr it was on NPR. i heard it on npr and she's like she's like how many and uh, who runs npr white people <laughs> and he's like god we're the worst <laughs> uh yeah just i so many great lines you were talking about manor gate it made me think of the line that we've already ruined water and pizza what what is gate gonna ruin next? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah this movie's great it's a very brisk brisk like 80 something minutes uh you know uh i think everybody of, ev- of all political spectrums can enjoy this uh again I'm, it's gonna make fun of the people that you disagree with and it's gonna make fun of you too like mm-hmm. it's it is that kind of satire so yeah yeah and uh and you have some lessons learned in there i think too and and, and that's in this kind of the silly you know hunting uh you know very violent movie mm-hmm. it has more to say about stuff than some of the movies that actually purport to be that kind right. of thing um but uh anything else to say about this no i just i just keep thinking of funny moments but that's that whole saving the champagne during the fight oh that's oh, so great yeah, yeah. yeah. The, even her even her taking the airplane at the end just the way that was handled was yeah. so funny and mm-hmm. just like you guys don't mind you know taking me home or like, no no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're good oh uh, well glenn howerton made me laugh a bunch at the beginning too because there's the whole the whole scene where the dude wakes up early and they have to kill him because right. they yeah, don't yeah. want anybody to know that they were on a plane and all that. But Howerton is talking to this uh, this uh, flight attendant, and the he keeps like throwing out these things just so that he sh- he can he's showing off, show his knowledge yeah. and everything. And he's like, uh, "Oh, is that the champagne from eighteen blah blah blah? <laughs> that was only five of them ever recovered and everything." And she goes. Uh, no, it's it's just your regular champagne. It's probably it probably doesn't taste very good either, you know. <laughs> and he's like, and and these and there's a point where she asks if he wants uh, caviar, and he goes, he goes, oh yeah, caviar. Oh, I had that yesterday. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, he starts off by telling how telling her how amazing it is, and she's never had it, and then he's like, yeah, I just had some yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he's such yeah. a dick. Uh, all right. Well, uh, what did you guys think about this movie? I'm hoping a lot of people watch this, uh, uh, even though there is all this coronavirus scare it's gonna be the only new movie to see for a while <laughs> yeah well that and bloodshot yeah That's bloodshot's true. definitely gonna you know be out there but anyway uh but what did you think about this uh go to syncast presented by cinema sins on facebook we're also on cinema sins twitter music video sins twitter uh we're also on soundcloud we're on discord if you want to get on discord you can go on the right side of our reddit page and get a link or you can go to the facebook page and private message me and i'll give you a link there Aaron, where can people find you? Uh, I'm on the Behind the Sins podcast. If you want to check out uh, that, we go behind the scenes of Behind the Sins every week with myself, mm. Jonathan Watkins, and Danae Hughes. Uh, you can find out all uh, my movie stuff at the website siftpop.com. That's siftpop with a T. Nice. All right. Well, that'll do it for uh, this mini pod. It's Chris Atkins and Barrett Sher and Aaron Dicer. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit, and be sure to visit CinemaSins.com.